there was nobody happier than me to hear there would be a reimagining of the classic turn-based tactical team war game XCOM. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and it still holds up, believe me. And without meaning to, I sorta of became the poster child idiot XCOM fan. And maybe that'll help you understand where I'm coming from when I say that this really is XCOM. The spirit of the old game is there, it's fun, and it's really good. Although, and I hate to say this, it feels like I'm biting the hand that feeds me to complain that I finally got the aliens I've been wanting for over a decade, but man, this game has problems. It has a lot of problems. There goes Caesar. Oh, what? Mars girl? What the fuck is the matter with you? You, you shot you Wario. I started out attempting to compare the console version to the PC version, which turned out to be easier than I expected, because 15 minutes into the Xbox version's tutorial, I got locked into an option screen with no way to move forward or back. I tried power cycling the Xbox, loaded it up again, and still frozen. First playthrough, immediate game breaker bug. Huh. Okay, game's unplayable, moving on. So I guess the PC version clearly wins out by default because, you know, fucking loads. And once you start a new game, you dive right into the action, and let me tell you, it is so great. It's tense, it's cinematic, the action on the ground is gritty and brutal. The camera really effectively shifts in to give you an up-close and personal look of the firefight. It's edge-of-the-seat stuff, so believe me when I say that when I'm talking about the gameplay, this game kicks all sorts of ass. But when I get back to base, right away I start to notice a lot of things that are just not as good as they should be. Starting off with soldier customization. A huge amount of the original XCOM's appeal was naming the soldiers after your friends and trying to keep them alive, and then cackling like an evil bastard when they get their faces burned off or they get skull fucked by a chrysalid. And let me tell you, in this game it's twice as fun to do. The loyalty you'll grow for your characters is amazing, and when one of them gets inevitably vaporized, you'll let out a legitimate scream of anguish. It's awesome. Do it, Benzai! Do it! Yeah! That's right, you get behind a fucking cover. Oh, shit! Benzai! No! He died before he had a chance to surrender. You bastards! You blew him up! I mean, it's completely pointless, I know that. It contributes nothing to the gameplay, but it's so much fun to do. And it's such a huge part of the game's appeal, at least for me it is, that I cannot believe how utterly wretched the soldier customization in this game is. It's just god-awful. You want to make these guys look like your friends, but it's almost impossible to do with only, like, 13 different hairstyles, a handful of hideous fucking heads, there's no way to customize body types, and the few aspects you can change are just hideous. I mean, look at this on his head. What is that? Are those supposed to be sideburns? Because it looks like he just drew those on with a permanent marker. And this happens with almost all the facial hairstyles. It's, it's just stupid. And I know it seems like nitpicking, but it's not. I love customizing the characters. It adds like a whole new dimension to the gameplay. It's, it's almost like role playing. And I don't even know why they bothered putting customization in if they were gonna do it this poorly. It's almost insultingly bad. And just about this time, you'll start to notice the graphics are inexcusably ugly. This looks like a game released eight years ago. Texture pop-in is noticeable all over the place, and everything just seems so flat and plastic and boring. The soldiers look like lame action figures. I don't I just wish they'd taken some chances, given the graphics some style. It's a shame how uninspired the art design is. The scientific discoveries aren't even worth looking at most times because there aren't even any cool pictures to go with them. And then there's the music, which is drab, dull, and unmemorable. It sounds like some crap that got rejected from Deus Ex Human Revolution. Then there's the voice acting. Oh my god, the voice acting sucks. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. The lead scientist's goofy German accent starts off funny, and then quickly turns sad, and then just becomes annoying. None of the characters ever shut up. They repeatedly say the same things over and over again from turn to turn, forcing you to mute them. And to further put a nail in the customization coffin, despite XCOM being comprised of a multinational group of soldiers, none of the voices you can pick have any sort of accent whatsoever, because they all sound American. Affirmative. Yes, Commander. 
to go. Aye, aye, Commander. Affirmative. A lot of the gameplay and mechanical tweaks really bother me, too. I know they were made to accommodate console gamers, but seriously, fuck console gamers. This is XCOM, dude. Learn how to organize a fucking inventory controller, monkeys. You just can't load out your soldiers like you'll want to. I used to have a dude carrying a shitload of grenades and a med kit. Here, you can only have one utility item. One. One grenade, or one med kit, or one stun gun. Your heavy weapons guy only has one rocket in his launcher. One rocket. With the odds stacked as they are against your troops, you're gonna miss those extra grenades and rockets on every single mission. And I know why they did it. They had to limit your ammo and equipment because there's just no way to deal with the increased weight issues because they scaled out time units completely. They just moved it down to two move actions and a fire action. One thing I really do like is the class system. As your soldiers get more experience, they advance as specialists in classes like sniper, assault, support, and heavy weapons. Each class has different skill trees, and that's great, except you're not allowed to pick what class your soldiers are assigned. It seems completely random. For instance, Private Mars Girl here was an absolute death machine on her first mission. I mean, damn, this girl's got issues. I love it. It's fucking hot. So she guns down aliens left and right, we get home, and guess what class she gets? Medic. She almost single-handedly wiped out the entire fucking map and they hand her a first aid kit? After three missions, I got, like, four snipers. The fuck am I gonna do with four snipers? Why can't I just pick what my soldiers get assigned to? I'm in charge, aren't I? This game is hard as balls, too, and not in the same way the original XCOM was really hard. I was never the kind to abuse save states in XCOM, but here you almost have to. Not only is the game really glitchy, with aliens sometimes having impossible line of sight, and attacks inexplicably clipping through multiple walls, on some missions, alien reinforcements are allowed to respawn just out of the sky. It's just not fair. Where it really gets to be bullshit is when your soldiers panic, and this happens all the time. They'll sometimes freak out if another soldier bites the dust, or sometimes if another soldier just gets injured. And when they panic, they'll either run around, which is basically an instant death sentence, or worse, fire directly at another squad member. And yeah, I know, panicking and berserking was in the original XCOM. You know what else was in that game? About 4 to 12 more squad members. There, losing one or two guys was completely survivable, but here, I lose one guy to gunfire, a second guy goes apeshit, and he frags down a third guy. Well, since my squad only has four fucking people, I just lost three quarters of them before I know what the hell happened. Now, it's not long before you get some technology upgrades that let you add one or two more members to the squad, but doesn't it just seem crazy they'd only send four to six people to confront an alien threat with vastly superior numbers and technology, when there's about 16 other dudes in the barracks just playing with themselves, when there's clearly more room in the Sky Ranger? And finally, everyone's brought it up, but there's no base defense. Everyone asked for this. It's just unbelievable they'd leave this out. It's another glaring omission that makes this game seem rushed. So after all that bitching, and you'll have to excuse me, I'm hardwired to do that, what do I really think about the new XCOM? I think its heart is in the right place, but I also think it doesn't even come close to reaching its full potential. Now look, hey, I'm happy it's here. It's not a betrayal. It's far from it. They listened to the fans. They listened to me. They were nice to me. They welcomed me back into the fold. And they resurrected an old classic I never thought I'd see again. And trust me, they saved us from the dark age that would have begun if we'd seen that god-awful first-person shooter. I mean, when we saw that shooter, the diehard XCOM fans, we screamed, we ranted, we basically rioted, we tore our clothes and gnashed our teeth. And guess what? They listened, they valued our opinion, they changed the game, and they basically started over from scratch to bring us this game, and I'm thankful. How many companies do you know that actually listen and care about fan input anymore? You think Bioware cares? Because I don't. This is loyalty, man. LOYALTY! <laughs> LOYALTY! REDEMPTION! <laughs> and I feel horrible for saying these things. I feel like I'm slapping them in the face for daring to complain about this. How cool were they to actually talk to me, to listen to me, after the whole betrayal thing. And I don't mean to insult them. I'm just saying it's not as good as it could have been. It's a good game, but man, it could have been fucking beautiful. Alright, everyone stand. We must mourn.
He died defending this world. <laughs>